What is going on Dolphins fans? Jacob here, Miami Dolphins Sydney Kit. So yesterday talked about a little bit more of the sad side of the Dolphins, talked about the center position and how it is certainly a position of concern going to the season. However, going to the season, it's always fun to take a look at the younger guys on the team and think who can break out, who can bust forward, look at Cater Kahu, Nick Needham, guys, younger guys that didn't expect to contribute to the roster, ended up stepping up and having very big roles. Last year, looking at Devon Achan, you know, mid-round pick, ends up being one of the most explosive players in the league. Guys on the team right now that could have that big season and requirements are going to be in your first three years, haven't had the stats quite yet, haven't had the impact on the team to really say you're a solidified player on the team. And I specify, specify first three years because I very easily could include a guy like Emmanuel Ogba on this list that has had good seasons in the past, is obviously not young by any means in the NFL, but he is going to have every opportunity to try to regain his form from previous years, maybe get a close to double digit sack season if everything goes right for him. Not going to include him on this list, but certainly a guy I'm excited to see how he plays out just coming back to the team at a position of need. But these guys are all going to be younger and all going to be guys that I think can step up to the plate. So the first two guys I'm talking about on this list are kind of cut from the same cloth in terms of who they can be at their position and the upside that they can end up being as a pro for the Miami Dolphins. And the first one I'm going to talk about is Cam Smith. Very exciting prospect coming out of Auburn and more of a project than prospect. And that kind of gives you a hint to who the second guy on this list is going to be. But you look at what he did last year or lack thereof. Only had a defensive snap in four games last year. Was mostly out there on special teams. And you look at who Cam Smith was coming out of college. You're looking at a six foot one, 180, 190 pound guy at the cornerback position. Can play inside. Can play outside. Athleticism off the charts. You're looking at four four three forty. You're looking at good athleticism score. Good production score uh, from the combine. You know. You look at all of the all the metrics that they grade these players on. He is certainly an incredible athlete. And he will have opportunity to jump up and play meaningful snaps on defense. As we saw last year, Vic Fangio just didn't trust him. Again, four games with defensive snaps. And there is potential for him to step up and play a good role. You look at the Dolphins, obviously, losing Xavier Howard. Keep hold of... Of uh, Ramsey, obviously he's the number one corner on the team. However, the slot position is probably going to be held down by Cater Kahu, but that other outside corner probably going to end up being Kendall Fuller. However, he's signed to a one-year contract. The Dolphins don't really have any incentive to give him a long leash. So if Kendall Fuller may be showing his age a little bit, only that one-year deal, somebody who isn't expected to be on the team longer than that just that one year. Cam Smith, who is the guy next in line on the ESPN depth chart, for the Miami Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins have every reason to go out and give him the opportunity, especially maybe early in the season when maybe the team is, you know you're going to struggle on defense. Maybe that's actually, now that I say it out loud, it's probably be more of a reason to keep Kendall Fuller in. However, as the defense gets healthier, as you finally find who your interior defensive line, your best guys for that position are, when you get your edge positions back, when you get Chubb back, when you get Phillips back. So rather than early in the season, like I was initially going to say, actually probably later on the season when he has got some more experience of watching the likes of, of Jalen Ramsey, of, uh, as previously mentioned, Kendall Fuller, then maybe come into the team and show the athleticism. He can be a guy that, you know, jumps off the page in terms of the athleticism and keeps speak, speaking about the speed, the strength, the power. You know, just six foot one, but can do a job, has a really good vertical for coming out of college. He can show all the upside, but he can also be like a no Igbenogany. Very similar situation. In fact, I'm pretty sure even from the same school being Auburn, or excuse me, you know, Cam Smith is from South Carolina, so both SEC guys. Both clearly show athleticism projects instead of prospects that you don't know who they will end up being as a pro. He spent most of the time last year watching the defense instead of being out there with that cornerback two spot somewhat up for grabs and certainly will be in need for the depth of the corner position. I expect him to get more snaps and certainly can prove himself as a key member of this Dolphins team. So second guy, very same nature, will have even more of an opportunity to jump in and prove himself from the jump. I think he could even be a week one starter. And that's going to be Chop Robinson, our, our rookie edge rusher. Obviously he is a rookie, so we don't know what he is. We know Cam Smith last year, they didn't trust him to be out there, especially down the stretch of the season. Only got minutes in, in meaningless games, or not meaningless, but moments in games where the score was certainly out of reach. Chop Robinson, there's a very good chance that Chop Robinson is the day one edge rusher opposite side of Emmanuel Ogba for this Dolphins team. And again, 
project more than prospects. He picked him towards the end of the first round. Some people say he fell. Some people think there were better edge positions still on the board that Dolphins could have taken. But with Chop Robinson, the stats weren't there in, in college. He didn't have the most sacks. He didn't have the most tackles. He didn't have the most quarterback pressures from the edge position. But again, very similar to Cam Smith, just the athletic profile and the ability to grow into an extremely talented player at the edge position is without a doubt there for Chopper Robinson. He has he has the skills. He has the frame. He's got everything you want from a guy that can step in day one and will have to get more reps day one than the Dolphins probably want him to with those injuries to Chubb and Phillips. Chopper Robinson is going to have an opportunity and likely will be that starter from day one. It will be his job to lose from then on. Obviously, you get Phillips back, you get Chubb back, and you expect him to be slaughtered right back into the team. But if Chopper Robinson from day one is proving himself worthy. He has every intention going in there and saying, this is my job, come take it from me. He will have the opportunity to do so more than likely, and he is without a doubt a massive candidate for breakout here in your, in your number one for him. So player number three is a guy that, quite frankly, I don't really believe in almost at all, and I would love him to blossom into a talented player that he clearly has the talent to do so, but just it hasn't quite got there for him yet. And Donovan believes in him more than I do, so I'm going to include this, include him on this list, in part because of Donovan, in part because I know a lot of Dolphins fans still do believe in him, and that is Eric Ezukama. Ezukama's coming into his third year. He has a total of 22 yards in two seasons. In 2023, he played two games, 22 yards rushing, I don't think he even has a catch. Excuse me, excuse me. 25 total yards. He has 22 yards on the ground as a wide receiver and has one catch for three yards as a receiver. Talent, again, is there. 6'2", 206. He has speed. Route running is actually pretty bad. But once he has the ball in his hands, Eric Azukama is a talented player. And it's clear Mike McDaniel last year went into the beginning of the season wanting him to be a Devo Samuel light. Somebody that you can... Line up around the field, again, as a route runner, just like Debo Samuel. Not the best at route running. That is not where he excels, but he excels at being a player that you can deploy all over the field, similar to what we have in Devon A. Chan, very different body type. But Devon A. Chan, you can line up in the backfield. You can line up in the slot. You can line up uh, in the backfield with another running back, and he can go out and run a route. You can toss it to him. You're not going to really expect him to run up the middle, but... Achan is a very versatile player for this Dolphins offense. Clear indication early last year was Eric Ezukama is a guy that Mike McDaniel also wanted to be just a versatile weapon that you could deploy around the field to ask him to do a multitude of things. The biggest issue with Eric Ezukama, though, is he's never healthy. And, and you look at either the neck or the back injury, I forget which it was off the top of the head, but the injury he sustained in college that they don't really know what to do about it, then pops up again last year. That's a big concern. Best of, best availability is availability, and Ezukama has not been available. And even in his first year when he was available, there's a lot of times where he was a healthy scratch. And then again, that neck injury popping up last year after week two, missed the entirety of the season going on IR after week two. Uh, I don't have a lot of hope, but if he is able to stay healthy, if that neck injury stays away, there is hope that he can be a Debo Samuel light for this Dolphins team. Again, you saw him get five attempts on the ground, 22 yards last year. Donovan loves to bring up the pass interference call that he drew over the middle of the field, setting up a field goal opportunity uh, against the Chargers, which was a big play at the time, but that's the literal highlight of Ezekama's career. Frame, speed, skill set with the ball in his hands there is a role for him to carve for himself in this Dolphins team but he just cannot stay healthy as well as the fact that he's not a good route runner he's not going to be given a long leash and in fact he may end up being a cut candidate for this team but if all does go right for him if everything sets into place that's just another weapon for this team another choice he then becomes the I think the tallest available wide receiver for the team so could he end up being a jump ball guy in the end zone? Who knows? But there is there is so much untapped potential with him that we have not seen whatsoever. But the opportunity will be there. He's very young. This could be the season for him. It'll be a make or break season for him if he even makes the team. I'd like to see him succeed. I hope he does. 
I'm not super confident in him, but the opportunity will for sure be there for Eric Ezekama. Going back to another rookie, this time with the absolute monstrous of a man in Patrick Paul. He is a large human being, massive, massive guy, offensive lineman for the Miami Dolphins. Preferred position is on the outside. His body type may actually suit him a little bit more for the inside. And certainly here in year one for Patrick Paul, that would be... A position where he could end up getting some time. You know the left tackle position, as long as Teron Armstead is healthy, is going to be Teron Armstead. Austin Jackson, he gets that extension. He's coming off of you know his best season as a Dolphin back-to-back. -back. Very good years for Austin Jackson, where you thought he was you know, dead to rights. Ends up now actually being one of the most secure positions on the team. Austin Jackson at the right tackle position. Even though last year he battled through some injuries, he's coming off two of the best seasons, if not the actual probably two best seasons of his career. So tackle positions, you're not going to see Patrick Paul barring injury, which of course with Toronto Armstead and Austin Jackson last year are always a possibility to pop up at any moment. But the interior of the offensive line, we made the video talking about centers yesterday, absolutely not not in a million years do I want him playing center, but at the guard positions where you have Isaiah Wynn coming in as the left guard, and again, as long as he stays healthy, which he didn't until last year, he should be the day one starting left guard, but then at right guard, anybody's guess as to who that right guard position is going to be, and none of it is particularly good. I'm not enthusiastic by any of the guys, whether it's Driscoll, whether it's Eichenberg, even if it's necessarily Patrick Paul, I'm not, I'm not really encouraged or enthusiastic about those guys stepping up to the plate and holding those positions for their own there is a role where Patrick Paul day one the athleticism is there the project again is there with Patrick Paul if you are just looking at him in a one-on-one -on -one setting where he's getting private workouts where you're just going going against an opposing player he looks fantastic however reports so far in camp is he has been struggling when coming in with the second and third string guys and he has not impressed early on. Again, we expected him to be. We expected him to be a little bit more of a, again, project. And I keep using that phrase, project instead of prospect. And I'm sure it's getting annoying at this point, but that's what the Dolphins did. That's what the Dolphins did in terms of, of, of their draft. You're looking at a, guy, a lot of guys that were not expected to play week one. But for a few of them, there will be opportunities to do so. And Patrick Paul is just another one of those guys. Final guy on this list will have to have a lot more things. I say go wrong for the Dolphins and go right for him in order for him to really amount to a lot on the field this year. But with the way this offense is run, anything's possible. And that being Jalen Wright, running back, the Miami Dolphins selected in the third round out of Tennessee. You look at what he did at Tennessee, he got better each and every season. His freshman year, 409 yards, doubling that to 875 yards, and then his final year as a junior, 1,013 yards, all-purpose all yards, 1154 from scrimmage uh, in his third season with Tennessee. Got better and better each season. You, you look at what he did uh, in the combine, fourth overall rated running back in terms of total score, athleticism score of 93. You look at the 40 time, 438, vertical jump 38, broad jump 11-2, very athletic Somebody that has, again, a lot of potential. Does have the production, unlike Chop Robinson, who I talked about earlier, where his numbers weren't quite there in college. Jalen Wright's ability came off, shown on tape, what he could do at Tennessee. But certainly will have a lot of things have to break his way. I mean, you're, you're just going down the, the, the offense. Guys that are for sure ahead of him. Obviously, in the running back room, you got at least two with, with A-Chan, with Moster, Tyreek, Waddle, Odell. Johnu Smith, and then the conversation probably open up for, what, the seventh guy in line? If that does open up, if you have a, a Raheem Moser go down, if you have a Devon Achan go up, go down. Jeff Wilson, does he make the team? I don't know. Does does Savon Ahmed make the team? Again, I don't know. They have Jalen Wright, who comes in, who has every reason athletically to end up being a good player for the Dolphins. Of the four I've listed previously, has the hardest chance to make the team as a he will make the team, let me rephrase it, he has the hardest team coming into this team and making an impact from day one. The talent is there, the athleticism is there, the profile is there, the numbers from college are there. There is obviously concerns about his ability to read the offensive line, which is a running back is massive at something that has hurt many talented guys, first, second, third round guys over the years as they were able to just over compensate once they got to the NFL they were not able to overcome I'm looking at Eddie Lacy I'm looking at Trent Richardson uh in recent years by recent years I mean 10 years ago now I guess strong uphill mountain to climb for Jalen Wright but talent is there and the Mike McDaniel offense if you're good 
If you prove yourself, you will be used. And that's just another fit for opposing team defenses to have to worry about. Is, can Azikama step up? Can Jalen Wright step up? Can whoever on this team step up? Because that's just another guy that they'll have to worry about. But talent, again, speed, athleticism, Jalen Wright has it. Opportunities, probably not so much. But if they do come, he could have a very solid season this year for the Dolphins. So those were my five guys that the Miami Dolphins could see step up this year as breakout players. Is there anybody that I didn't mention that you think can step up or you want to see step up? Let us know down below in the comments. Check out our video from yesterday talking about our biggest concern for the team going into the season. Uh, till then, appreciate y'all very much for watching. Hit that like button. Hit that sub button down below. Get involved in the comments. Appreciate y'all very much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Go Dolphins.